Large, bustling cities slowly sink. Animals die before they have a chance to save themselves. People have no other choice but to abandon their homes and flee. Humankind plunges into a war trying to take over unaffected territories. All these predictions may become a reality if Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth, turns green. Yep, you heard it right. Scientists from all over the globe have been exploring the continent for a century and concluded that around 90 million years ago, Antarctica was a fertile land teeming with life. But why, at the same time, was living on the continent as hard as surviving in a horror movie? What will happen to our planet if the permafrost degrades? And most importantly, can Antarctica become green again? Why would scientists even think that Antarctica used to be green? In 2017, scientists used a drilling rig to lift a soil sample from the bottom of the Amundsen Sea. What the researchers found inside shocked them. With the help of computer tomography, they identified samples of forest soil, pollen from the first flowering plants, spores, and even root systems, all of which turned out to be around 90 million years old. Yeah, Antarctica was indeed green. 90 million years ago, there was no ice sheet, and there were swampy, tropical, and blossoming forests everywhere. It was the warmest period in Earth's history. But it was also a time of prehistoric fires destroying every living thing in their path. And although Antarctica was previously thought to have avoided that fate, today it's clear that it was literally on fire. Evidence of that was discovered in 2015. Scientists found charcoal fragments on James Ross Island in Antarctica. They analyzed the material with a scanning electron microscope, and they discovered that the fossils are most likely burnt conifers. Apparently, more than 60 million years ago, when Antarctica separated from the supercontinent of Gondwana, it found itself isolated and vulnerable. Lightning, falling meteorites, and active volcanoes became its curse. Plus, high oxygen levels and a significant quantity of flammable trees contributed to the conflagration. Creatures that didn't have time to go underwater died along with the green forests, and there were quite a number of such creatures. What creatures inhabited Antarctica? When conducting paleontological fieldwork on Seymour Island in Antarctica in 2013 and 2015, scientists discovered the remnants of mosasaurs. These immense beings lived between 66 and 82 million years ago. They inhabited most of the Atlantic Ocean. Thus, their remnants were found not only in Antarctica, but also in North and South America, Europe, Africa, and Western Asia. Scientists believe mosasaurs hunted bony fish, sharks, birds, and other marine reptiles, including sea turtles and even other mosasaurs. Yeah, they used to attack each other. This is evidenced by teeth marks on the remains and bones that have survived to this day. But not all the bones found in Antarctica belong to mosasaurs. Scientists found someone older in the ice. In 2019, scientists stumbled across a fossil of a previously unknown species. And although the skeleton wasn't complete, the researchers had enough to understand that the animal the remnants of which they found was an archosaur, an early relative of crocodiles and dinosaurs. It's been named Antarctinax shackletoni. It's thought to have fed on amphibians, insects, and early relatives of mammals that inhabited the continent. Life in Antarctica millions of years ago was probably something like a horror movie. But today, there's no life, so there's nothing to fear, right? No such luck, guys. What life forms exist in Antarctica today? In the winter of 2021, an iceberg split off from the Brunt Ice Shelf in Antarctica. The iceberg was the size of Los Angeles. At the site of the split, researchers deployed an underwater camera system called OFOBS and discovered an entire ecosystem beneath the ice sheet. Most of the animals found there were anemones, 
These organisms spend most of their time attached to rocks or the sea bottom without moving. They feed on microscopic algae and organic particles that float by. Scientists assumed that they would see something like this under the ice shelf, because anemones are also found in other dark and cold earth waters. But agile living creatures were a real surprise for the OFOBS team. There were sea cucumbers, starfish, shellfish, worms, fish, and even octopi. To move, all of them need the energy that sunlight sustains. But sunlight doesn't penetrate the ice, so it's a mystery what keeps them viable. An even bigger surprise was the radiocarbon dating result on the dead particles of the animals they'd found. It turns out that they'd been living there continuously for the last 6,000 years. They were probably part of some food chain. Or maybe they'll even mark the beginning of a new one. What's the danger of the complete revitalization of Antarctica? That's not paint or Photoshop. These are algae that grow on the surface of melting Antarctic snow. Scientists have determined that algae interact with tiny fungal spores and bacteria. This could mean that a new habitat, a new ecosystem, is taking shape right before our eyes. A team of British scientists suspects that the reason for this is an increase in air temperature. Previously, scientists have believed that Antarctica was immune to global warming. However, studies have shown that the continent has warmed up three times faster than the rest of the world in the last three decades. Antarctica has also seen a record amount of ice loss. According to some reports, between 2008 and 2015, ice loss increased by 36 billion gallons per year. Moreover, according to The Guardian, an increase in native plant species can change the chemical makeup of the continent's soils. This can change how organic matter decomposes and degrade the permafrost. Higher temperatures may also pave the way for invasive species beyond the given habitat to outcompete native plants. Returning to a green Antarctica would be disastrous for the rest of the world. All of the continent's melted ice would be washed into the ocean, and water levels would rise by almost 200 feet. New York, Sydney, London, New Zealand's islands, and Tonga would be inundated first, and then you can take a look at the map and count how many cities are located in the unfortunate coastal zone. Moreover, glaciers shouldn't be considered just frozen water. They hold dangers that we can't even see. I'm talking about viruses. Take, for example, an anthrax outbreak in northern Russia in 2016. Back then, due to an increase in air temperature, some of the permafrost thawed. As a result, the ice released a bacterium that caused a terrible disease. About 2,000 reindeer died, and dozens of people were hospitalized. No one was prepared for that because Yamals hadn't seen anthrax for the last 75 years. I have only two words for those who still think glacier melting will never affect them environmental refugees. When the struggle between ordinary people over a place for their homes on dry land begins, do you think Antarctica will remain as untouchable as it is now? By the way, check out this video about a new continent that was found under the ocean.